Hi guys, and welcome to the wonderful world of movement hacking. I'm Lisa Mahalik, and we are going to talk about three different things in this series with a bonus for. First, we're going to talk about awareness. That's what this video is all about today. Next, we're going to talk about organization, because once you're aware of the structures within your body, you can get them organized, and then we can move on to options. Now, over all three of these, you can imagine like three scoops of ice cream. Over all these, we're going to sprinkle a delicious, crunchy topping of fun, because if you're not having fun, what's the point? I'm just saying. So, hopefully you will have as much fun as I'm having, because I am enjoying my anatomy. And let's, with any luck, by the end of this video, you are gonna be enjoying your anatomy more than you are right now. Because this video, like I said, this is all about awareness. It's why we care about it, how we do it, and then we're gonna go through some exercises together so that by the end of this video, you will feel better than you do at this here very moment, and you will hopefully be enjoying your anatomy a little bit more than you have before. Ready? Let's go. All right, so first off, why awareness? Well. As anybody who's ever been through or knows anyone who's ever been through a 12-step program, the first step is to recognize that you have a problem. If you don't know that you have a problem, you're not going to be able to fix it. So more importantly, when we're talking about anatomy in the body, you need to know where the problem is and what the structures are around that problem so that you can affect them. If you cannot affect them, then we're going to have problems. Yeah. So. Once you know what you're working with, that way you can understand your tools. If, you learn how to, if you're learning how to drive, you will learn how to drive a little bit better if you have some basic understanding of how a car works. Similarly, if you're working with the human body, you will understand how to sort out your body a lot better if you have some basic understanding of how the human body works, right? The other thing is awareness of an area also kind of turns on the communication channels between the body and mind. So you can send clearer signals to that area and you can receive clearer signals. That doesn't sound great if you're like, all I'm receiving is pain, that sucks. But here's the thing, that pain is burning out the more subtle information you might get that will help you to get out of pain. So what, one of the things we're gonna do with our awareness training today is get a clearer channel of communication so you can send clearer information out and so you can get clearer information back and it's not blurred by the pain. Now, through this series, we're gonna look at the three major centers of gravity, which coincidentally correspond to some of the major pain centers in the body. We're gonna look at the head and the neck, and the neck, right? We're gonna look at the rib cage and the shoulders, carrying the weight of the world on those shoulders, shoulder pain. In any given year, a good 50% of Americans have shoulder pain. That's scary. It's, I might even, I can't even with that. Let's just put it that way. It's obviously, I'm just like, is that for real? It's for real, NIH studies. We're also gonna look at the pelvis and the lower back, which can also affect the knees and ankles and feet. We're not going down there quite yet. So today, we're just going to look at head and neck, rib cage, shoulders, and low back pelvis. And we're going to use breath as our tool to affect them. Why is that? Because if you are watching this video, that means that you are alive and therefore you are breathing. Everybody breathes. And no matter how people are gonna tell you like, oh, this is the right way to breathe. No, this is the right way to breathe. This is the right way to breathe. If you are not dead, you are breathing okay. You are breathing effectively. That's all I'm gonna say. That said, you can always improve the efficiency of your breathing. You can improve the skill level of your breathing, and you can improve the way you can use your breathing as a tool. So let's do some more of that magic, right? The other thing about breathing is the breath and the movement of the respiratory diaphragm helps to turn on your parasympathetic nervous system. So we're, we spend most of our time in the sympathetic nervous system. That's fight, flight, ah, adrenals, ah as opposed to the parasympathetic, rest and digest. Notice anything about the prevalence of digestive issues in the country right now? I'm just saying, maybe we're all spending not enough time in the rest and digest portion of our entire bloody nervous system. 
not that I have opinions on this or anything. So we're going to go hook into our parasympathetic nervous system with this breathing. We're going to help bring our bodies back into homeostasis because the sympathetic and the parasympathetic work together to keep our bodies balanced. So just understanding how to access the parasympathetic when we need it is kind of beautiful. So let's come, our, come bring ourselves out on the fight or flight sympathetic nervous system rawr, and come join mind to body in the parasympathetic nervous system world for breathing, right? Okay, so first off, what you're gonna do, you're just gonna pause, check in with your body. Quick rundown, start from the feet, why not? How are your feet feeling? Pain, discomfort, where are your feet contacting the ground? No judgment, just checking in. Don't try to change anything, just like, huh, that's interesting. My left foot feels pretty even. My right foot is like, it's like my big toe and part of my inner heel, and where's the rest of my foot? That's me. Your mileage may vary. Just notice what's going on. How do your knees feel? Sore, stiff, absent, just there, awesome, who knows? Check it. Hips and pelvis. How are your hips and pelvis feeling? On, off, tight, loose, painful, awesome. Just checking in. Low back, belly. How are those things feeling? Warm, cold, spacious, cramped. Up, down, strange, charmed. Just checking in. Don't worry about changing things, just see how it's going. How's your ribcage? Feel forward, back, feel side, side, does it feel rotated? Tight, loose, open, closed. There, not there. Shoulders and arms. Elbows and wrists, any soreness, stiffness. What are your hands doing? Just checking in, seeing what's going on with your hands. Checking in with your shoulders, with your neck and your head, your face. What's going on with my face? And so now we've got a decent baseline for the entire body. Cool, that was fun. So now that we've got a baseline for the head and neck, here's the cool thing. You can do this part seated or standing. You can do all of this seated or standing, I'm gonna do some of it seated and some of it standing just so you can see really clearly what's going on. The first thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna find some structures on our bodies and then I'm gonna bring my assistant, Napoleon Bony Parts over here to model what these structures look like naked. So first off, bring your fingers back here at the base of your skull and come around where your skull curves down and starts to curve down into the muscle. That is the base of your skull. And it's where the base of your skull meets the top of your spine. So here's the top of your spine. If you bring your hands around here at the front, you'll notice that this, in fact, is where your spine starts. It's not down here. You can make a mustache. You'll never, ever forget that your spine starts, facial, facially speaking, right under the nose with your spinal mustache. If you put your fingers down here at the base of your skull again, and I'm just going to give myself a little light pressure, not grrr, but just light, just about, you know, not just resting, but a little bit more. So I'm just getting, just getting below the surface. Okay, there we are. Without moving my head, I'm just moving my eyes side to side, up and down in circles. So if you do this with me, while keeping a little light pressure on the base of your skull, you might notice that the muscles at the base of your skull are contracting. Your suboccipital muscles are directly linked to your eyes. It's so looking at your phone all day, staring at the computer screen. This is a big reason that the base of people's skulls get tense and people's necks get sore. So here's an easy way to fix that. But first, let me show you what it looks like naked. Let me introduce you to my lovely assistant, Napoleon Bony Parts. Come here, Bony. He's all fancy because he likes to be fancy. Bring you over here. We'll have 
my fancy camera work. Here we go. And so here we have the base of the skull right here. And you can see that there's actually, on your own skull, there's a lot of space here. You might even be able to feel this bump down here. So you can notice that there's a lot of space between here and the actual base of the skull. This is a lot of muscle down here, a lot of suboccipital muscle. So again, it's really important to keep those muscles loose and open. So all this space here, we are going to open up. Send Boney over here to pause and join me in this breathing exercise. So as you inhale, so we talk about inhaling through the nose, exhale through the mouth. The reason people will say to inhale through the nose is that the way your nose has evolved, there are all these little swirls and passages in there and hairs and nose gunk. And its job is to clean stuff out of the air. So the air that hits your lungs is warmed, it's moisturized, it's cleaned, it's high quality air. So when your the air hits your lungs, you're like, oh, how wonderful. So when you inhale through your nose, you're making sure that the air hitting your lungs is high quality, well-maintained air. You will also notice that once you start breathing harder and exercise, you're gonna need to open your mouth because you just need sheer volume in there. Don't worry about it, you're not breathing wrong. If you're not dead, you're not doing it wrong. So. Just again, checking in, how are your head, how's your head and neck feeling? You know, stiff, loose, fine, not fine, whatever. Just checking it out. There you are. So when you find your suboccipitals, you find the base of your skull in this area, remember how deep the actual spine is. So this triangle here, just solid muscle. You're going to imagine, you can imagine a flower blooming. I like to imagine a sea anemone, kind of like this, and they go, out three-dimensionally, you know, up, down, side, side. So as I inhale, I'm gonna imagine, just putting my hand right here, I'm gonna imagine a sea anemone blooming right into my hand as I inhale, so. As I exhale, I'm just gonna let that sea anemone stay open and spacious. I'm gonna inhale again, expand through here. Again, let my arm come down, let my shoulders relax and inhale. You might prefer to keep your hand up there. You might find that it feels better without it. Experiment. One more time, inhale and expanding. Now before I open my eyes and move, you open your eyes and see, do I look any different from when I started? Possibly, possibly not. I have no idea, I'm not looking. I feel different though. So check in with yourself and see how you feel. How does your head and neck feel? How do your eyes feel? I'm noticing my vision looks a little bit clearer than it used to. That's kind of interesting because I just released these muscles that have this communication system with my eyes. Hmm, not bad. Now we're going to look at the next center of gravity down, the ribs and shoulders. We're gonna find the first rib, and we're gonna find the base of the rib cage. Now, again, my lovely assistant, Boney, is gonna come over here and show us what these bits look like naked. I'm sure I can see you here, there we go. So, here is the sternum right here breastbone, whatever you want to call it. And up here is the top of the breastbone. It's technically it's called the manubrium, so I might use both terms. Top of the breastbone, top of the sternum, manubrium, whatever. But you can find it if you find your collarbones. Right here, this flat space in between them. Your bony's collarbones, down a little bit, there's that flat space. Boom. You will also notice that right here at the collarbones, there's this kind of transparent stuff here on bony. That's cartilage. That's why we can breathe and our rib cages can expand and contract because it's all flexible and stuff. From there, it, the first rib goes underneath the collarbone, comes all the way around back to the base of your neck, your first thoracic vertebra. 
I tend to use the bottom of the last cervical vertebra, the last neck vertebra, as a marker because it's really easy to find because it's super sticky out. Let's see, get bony going sideways. It's pretty, pretty sticky out. If you put your fingers on the base of your neck here, you can find, I can find that, that vertebra pretty prominently. In fact, it's called the vertebra prominence, which is Latin for the prominent vertebra. Dude, sometimes the old school anatomists totally got this right. So how to find that in yourself, find your collarbones, find that flat space, your manubrium, bring your fingers around the back, just below that prominent vertebra, your vertebra prominence. Right now my hands are pretty much following the line of my first rib. As I breathe, I can feel it moving a little bit. What it's going to do is it's going to do a little bit of, not quite this obviously, but let's see if you can feel that on your own body. Now we're going to change it up because when you change things a little bit, that helps bring awareness to the area. So instead of letting the ribs go, we're going to let them go. I just pop my spine. Now I'm going to keep that image in my head while I rest my hands. One more or less my first rib. One more time. And the other fun thing, you've probably heard about belly breathing versus chest breathing. So I'm gonna back up a little bit so you can see my belly. When I breathe from here, I'm breathing up, I'm doing a lot of upper chest breathing. Now I'm going to see about instead of breathing up into my shoulders, I can breathe down into my belly. Go from the side. The front, watch my shoulders. They're still moving, just not as much as they were earlier. I'm going to bring down arms and breathe out. I can breathe down and look at the options I've got already. How do your shoulders feel? How does your neck feel? How does your breath feel? Checking in and seeing how things have changed with your chest. Now we're going to move down to the low back. <clears throat> now we're standing already. Oh, wait. I was getting all excited about that and I forgot to mention there's one more place in the rib cage to breathe, and that's the base of your ribs. You find your low back, you find the bottom of your rib cage. Kind of put your hand, boom, right about there. And you just breathe back into your own hand. Remember that whole thing about the flower of the anemone blooming? It can happen right there. Face the rib cage, right around here. There's a lot of really important muscles in this area. The most important one for us today is the respiratory diaphragm. It is huge. There is the most diaphragm tissue and the most lung tissue back in this area. So when you're breathing up here, you are cheating yourself of all the oxygen you could have if you just breathe down here. You notice what just happened to my rib cage. I went from here to here. Better organization already. We haven't even talked about organization. Love it. 
So. Inhaling in here, exhaling. You don't have to exhale through here. Then you're gonna put weird curves in your back again. Inhale here, exhale, keep it spacious. Inhale here, exhale, keep it spacious. One more time, inhale, exhale, keep it spacious. So two points on the ribs. You can breathe through here, you can breathe through here, and you can see how this diagonal is really important in organizing the rib cage. How do you feel now? Shoulders, neck, head, might even feel a little bit of release in the low back. I know I am. And as somebody with a major, major, major disc herniation, every day that's a happy low back day is a happy day. So now we're gonna move on to low back. And it's pretty straightforward to find on bony. Let me show you. <clears throat> First, how's your low back feeling? You can do the sitting, standing, anything, but just check in, how is it feeling? Tight, loose, open, not so open. Does it feel any different from what it did when you started? Are you not getting anything at all? Either way, that's okay. So on bony right here, on yourself, you can find the top of your spine, or the top of your pelvis, and the bottom of your ribs, and your lumbar spine in between the two. This is what it looks like naked. Right here. Like no other bony structures in here. This is just handling your entire body weight. What I like about this, and what I like about it, well, I like many things about bony, but one of the cool things about bony is you can see how this central column here, the weight-bearing part of your spine, is much more towards the center of the body than we usually think of. When we touch this bit out here, you're touching a good two, maybe even two and a half inches back of the weight bearing portion of our spine. Keep that in mind. When you touch your lumbar spine, all right, here we are getting, getting in touch with it. You can find somewhere around the middle to the lower area. If you want to get picky, all the nerds in the house, we're looking for about L2, L3, your second, or third lumbar vertebra. More or less, from the top of your pelvis, go up a couple of bumps, and that's what we're talking about, right? So, see how my low back's doing here? We stick out a little bit. Not my best point of sale, let's put it that way. Let's see that you can see my spine a little bit better. There we go. So, you can see the spine a little bit better. Now here's the deal. You, you, like, we've done our little check-in, and you're gonna have one hand on your belly and one hand on that L2, L3 area. You're gonna imagine a space right between your hands. Imagine a point right between your hands. There's gonna be a sphere there. Imagine there's a sphere there. Look at how my back is already changing. There's a sphere between your two hands. That sphere is gonna expand. It's gonna expand forward, but mostly it's gonna expand back. Anemone, looming. As you inhale, and exhale, keep that space. Inhale, and exhale, keep that space. Inhale, and exhale, keep that space. One more time, inhale, and exhale, keep that space. So if you look at my back now, see how different it is from when I started. Check in with your back. How does it feel? Does it look or feel different from when you started this whole exercise? So the other thing to point out is as we expand the flower in our low back, change the awareness of our body balance and change the awareness of our lower back, it changes the alignment of the pelvis and may affect the hips, the knees, the ankles, and the feet as well because everything is connected. So, checking out your low back, how does that feel? We're gonna check out the whole body too. Again, starting from the feet. Are the feet hitting the ground any, any, any way differently? Mine are. How your knees feel? 
same different hips pelvis low back mid back belly chest shoulders elbows wrists neck and head has your body changed any way from the beginning of this video i sure hope it's changed for the better and here's the thing so this is why i always start with awareness because it is super 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 powerful just by bringing awareness to these areas of your body you have made changes and i do want to emphasize that this is you who has made changes it's not me I'm on the other side of the screen. I'm not even here with you. Much as I love you. But you did this. You have the power to take care and take control of your body. And the next steps, as we'll see in the next couple of videos, would be organization. So you can align your body even more effectively, both seated and standing, and in any activity you do. And then finally, what we would do is we would look at movement options. So not just the ones that you can use now if your body hurts less. We're going to look at the ones you're overusing, the ones you're underusing, and the movement patterns and habits that are going to help keep you feeling good, feeling pain-free, and keeping you from re-injuring your body. So I hope that you are enjoying your anatomy a little bit more. I hope you are enjoying these movement hacks. Let me know what you think. And if you feel like you need personal help, please contact me because I am always happy to work with people one-on-one, -on -one, both in person in New York City and online. All right, enjoy your anatomy, enjoy your breath, and go forth and practice this because the more often you practice this, the more effective it will be. You do this three times a day for a month, you are gonna have a new body. So enjoy that anatomy, and let me know how it goes.